I'm Sinead Haney and I'm the Mental Health Officer for Northern Ireland Student Union. Hi, I'm Rafa Boyle and I'm the LGBTQ Plus Officer of SRC. Hi, I'm Fanon Quigley and I'm part of the Advisory Board of the Christ Cafe. Hi, I'm Siobhan O'Neill and I'm the Mental Health Champion for Northern Ireland. Do you think there's more we can do, I suppose, to help young people navigate that world, you know, teaching coping skills and things? What, what, what do you want to see uh, educators doing, for example? I think I want to, I want to see teachers taking more of a, a side on social media. I think I want, I want teachers in my school to kind of understand that social media isn't all bad. Because I find my teachers, personally, they just okay. say, it's bad, it's bad, this happens. It's like, mm -hmm. there's a good side in it. It, like, it can spread a good message. It depends mm -hmm. who's using it. Like, there's some people who just think, I'm gonna use this to annoy someone or uh, make them think, oh, I look bad or I create this self-image. Mm -hmm. I want teachers to show the good side of social media, but also <coughs> keep on track of, there is also a bad side that you need to be prepared for. And I feel yeah. it can create a lot of things in your head. I suppose like just on teachers as well. Like I think another thing that would be nice to see, not just teachers in general, obviously we see teachers every day, but in like adults in general, I think the understanding for how it is nowadays, because it is slightly different to what it would have been like when my parents were my age. Like obviously we do have this exposure to, to the sort of wider um, world and community. Um, but I think like maybe a form of empathy to the fact that what maybe no big deal to an adult could be a huge deal to someone like us, like somebody sitting commenting on an Instagram post calling you ugly or something. Like, like I know my dad would be like, oh, wash it off. But I'd be like, call me ugly. <laughs> yeah. right? So I like I think a bit more of like an understanding, especially from teachers. I think teachers sort of like an inevitable when you are this age is you know petty little fights over Snapchat or something, and they do they go through school then. And I think teachers kind of have this sort of brush it off sort of thing. So it's maybe a bit more understanding and education really as to what it actually is like as a young person on social media. So empathy and a, a bit of compassion for what you're going through as young yeah. people. Um, do you think we need to be including mental health in the like the curriculum for teachers? Is, yes. Or is that yeah. You, yeah. definitely, yeah, yeah. Time, as a yeah. solid yes there. Because <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> yeah. some teachers yeah. would say, well, it's not our role, you know, but, but so tell me more about that, yeah. I think like everyone will have mental health issues at some point you know like everyone's had their highs and their lows mm -hmm. and teachers saying like it's not their problem is kind of like pushing like it's kind of like dehumanizing in a yeah, way yeah. like it kind of like just means like just all I want all I need to do is teach you and that's that like it stops there mm -hmm. I teach you maths you leave my classroom that's all but you do your homework like, like that's not the way you know, it, it like, shouldn't no, be like it, that and you can't learn as well you know if you're struggling with anxiety or something like that which is so so common oh, exactly yeah. all the stats are showing that's really high but really like mm -hmm. if you think about it if if you were to fall in school and break a bone the teachers would phone an ambulance the teachers would accommodate the they'd fact like, that you they'd know what to do <laughs> they would know what yeah, to do yeah uh, but i don't think i think this sort of stigma which is why i really actually like the likes of crisis cafe and stuff because it really is sort of combating against the stigma which is nearly one of the biggest battles with hearing people out when they are struggling with their mental health and um, this sort of stigma that oh she's just upset or is he's just crying or like he must be having a bad time like i, I think that's so unfair because <clears throat> like uh, like to have mental illness is to be equally as sick as someone with a broken leg the only difference is, is you can't see it so mm -hmm. why why you should be able to phone an ambulance and go to hospital if you break your leg and teachers are able to you know combat a first aider or whatever why should there not be mental health support which is equally as big of a deal mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah no and i would agree with you there um but also then links with mental health services so that mm -hmm. we know so the teachers know what their role is and that mm -hmm. that's sort of clearly defined and then they know when they can and that they have somebody to pass on Even to teacher you know. training like yeah that's like so like um, as part of my plan as mental health officer this year i wanted to launch a pastoral care and um, sort of workshop with crisis cafe in mm -hmm. giving teachers basic crisis intervention skills because as an inevitable when you are going in as a for a career in teaching and you're going to be teaching in secondary schools young people are going to have mental health problems and you're going to be seeing them five days a week so yeah. chances are you're going to have to deal with it and help them cope so i think if teachers had basic crisis intervention tied in with the rest of their training that they take in school um, it might be really helpful and beneficial to teachers because some stuff is quite heavy it is quite heavy to take on and it's about understanding how to handle that and what to do with that information and not to make it your own problem and everything so that's why I think it would be very important for teachers to understand a bit more of the crisis intervention stuff that is very current at the minute.
Yeah, I think I think you're right. Sometimes teachers would maybe avoid having a conversation because they're frightened then and they wouldn't know what to do if a person, if a young person said, for example, they were suicidal or they were self-harming, you know, and that's a really scary situation for a teacher yeah. to be in. So you can see it from their perspective as well. Oh, yeah. So it's important that, that they have the skills to talk about this stuff, but then that they know exactly what to do. And, you know, adults, we, you know, our generation <laughs> haven't been brought up with that. You know, we oh, were yeah. learning about this all the time as well so so we need to know more and we need to listen more to young people as yeah. well so i know you have some questions for me um does anybody want to kick us off yeah oh um well as mental health champion uh like what do you think more could be done like with lgbtq plus people because in general i know like us as a group like men like lgbtq plus people have her mental health because of the discrimination we face and the like the problems we face the way like um, same sex marriage wasn't legalized until like a few years back and like what what more do you think could be done or is there anything? Yeah, no, I mean all of the data is showing us that, that LGBT and particularly transgender people really yeah. marginalised in Northern Ireland, high rates of mental health problems because of the discrimination and homophobia that we see. So there's so much we could do across society there. I mean, promoting diversity, how you talk to your children about this stuff mm -hmm. and, you know, giving people the language and the skills to be able to have confident conversations um, that include people. You know, um, so so that's one side of it. I think we also need to have space, safe spaces for um, LGBTQ young people to come gather and talk and socialise. Yeah. You know, and talk about their feelings and talk about what life's like for them. Mm -hmm. um, and that would make you know that would make a big difference. Just having those connections, yeah. being able to connect and in, in real life, like not just in social media. So that's important that, that we create in every in every high street and every village and town places where LGBT young people can go and, and meet other people mm. and and hang out you know and, and that in and of itself is very very powerful um, and then there's there's things we can do in schools for example you yeah. know I've seen a couple of really good examples of where they have um, you know these kind of gay straight whatever groups or ally groups mm. you know people coming together just to talk about discrimination and to address it and to campaign and to mm. celebrate pride together so that's yeah. really strong too and then for young people who struggle with their mental health we do need services there that are LGBTQ plus friendly yeah. that again that are accessible that can provide early intervention um, and help whenever things are starting to go wrong and people can get access to treatments um, easily but I think if we do all the stuff around society you know make it more inclusive and tolerant you know we we still have a lot of debate um, about you know LGBT plus issues yeah. and it's not you know, it's just not what you see in other places and other mm -hmm. progressive societies. So we do need to move beyond that. Yeah. Um, you know, absolutely. and create a more um, a more diverse society and, and be more open about this stuff mm -hmm. generally. But mm -hmm. um, services are, are so important too, you know, as well. Yeah. Um, and just on services, Siobhan, how do you feel about the idea that there is an automatic referral? Sort of, if you go to the GP with a mental health problem, it tends to be like, like a circle of go to the GP, get referred to CAMS. CAMS sometimes falls through. I know from my personal experiences, it has always fallen through. Right. Um, and I've ended up just stopped going. Um, and it was only really when I discovered like the likes of Crisis Cafe and stuff, um, as, as a form of mental health support, that I actually was able to support my own mental health. But I think this automatic referral about going to GP, going to CAMS, and just doing that circle, it's always just gonna be GP CAMS. Like, how do you feel about that sort of automatic that's so good. Cams. I mean, that's so good to anybody. You need to get the right service at the right time. Um, CAMS is really for, I suppose, moderate to severe mental health mm -hmm. problems. So ideally, we'd be getting people earlier. So the plan and the mental health strategy is that there would be therapy hubs. So GPs um, would be able to refer very at an earlier stage for a therapy. It could be a counselling therapy. Um, it, it could be art therapy, music therapy, or something yeah. like that, depending on what your needs are and what you want. So um, that's a strategy. It's actually happening in various places as well. In Northern Ireland, you know, it's we brilliant. see examples of it happening really and working really, really well. We also have examples of, rather than going to the GP for that appointment, you go to a mental health worker as part of a multidisciplinary team. So you don't go near a GP, you talk to somebody who's trained and they'll be able to help with you select the right service, the right intervention. It could be social mm -hmm. prescribing even, you know, it could be something like a group 
that might yeah. be better depends on it just depend on what you're into and what your needs are yeah because i know um, from like my personal experience there's been twice where um where i've had sort of a bad episode of my mental health that i have really needed to seek support um, on both cases it was a case of i was at the school concert school counselor told vice principal vice principal sends me to gp gp sends me to calms and it was the same thing twice and both times it just fell through so and i know that that's the case with a lot of people and yeah. um, so yeah. i'm really glad to hear that in within the strategy and stuff with the likes of the therapy hubs and everything because i feel like it could be really important and could really nip these issues in the bud before they get to a point where a young person might be feeling suicidal or self-harming um, I think it is really important. Or even at, even in the school <coughs> setting, you know, we're trying to introduce more um, therapies through schools so that when things are starting to go wrong that your teacher can help you find yeah. something that's really accessible with without going near the doctor or without going to other places that you can get a direct referral kind of that way or signpost in there as well. Um, but, but there's also a difficulty with CAMS, you know, we, we're under resourced, there's not enough therapists there in CAMS. Mm -hmm. the, the money that's spent on child and adolescent services isn't near enough. Yeah. You know, again, I keep going back to the strategy, the strategy includes plans to improve that, yeah. but of course then we need the strategy funded in full, which means a third more money. But we'll, mm -hmm. we'll still be we'll doing all that stuff, but we can do it quicker and, and better if we can get it funded yeah. straight, straight away. You know, but early intervention really is the answer. You know, if we could try and nip these things in, in the bud when the, when, the, when the difficulties start arising, then that would make a big difference, I think. Yeah, 100%. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks.